Hey, welcome back to Razzadaz and Marcus Plays Kingdom Hearts. Last episode, we were told to go see that bell. She really is a funny girl. That bell. Uh, what was the story I was about to s tell you guys beforehand? Who's the story? Oh, yeah, things that scared me. Uh, so yeah, I told you guys about that Winnie the Pooh doll last episode. Fuck off. Um, there were a couple other things that scared me as a kid. Um, so my uncle is like a really huge fan of John Wayne. For those of you in the peanut gallery and don't know who John Wayne is, he's basically like the biggest star to ever be in westerns. Uh, probably first only to Clint Eastwood, probably. Uh, he was... He was most known for um, uh, the original version of True Grit, uh, as well as like a couple other things as well. Like he has like a huge film career, or well, had a few a huge film career rather. But um, yeah, he, my uncle is like a really huge fa uh, fan of John Wayne movies, and uh, he actually has like a couple different. Hey, level up! Uh, he actually has like a couple different like artifacts. Well, not artifacts, but like kind of like pieces of John Wayne memorabilia he has like a couple different plates but um the thing I was scared of most were the statues that he had of John Wayne cuz I'll put a I'll put a picture up of the the statue that I'm like most scared of like the one that like like the Wayne the Pooh doll I actually like sometimes would like want to like cover up or at least like have it facing toward the wall yeah, I'll, I'll put a picture of that up, because, man, oh man, like, whenever I would go down to the basement to play any of my games, that thing would always be there in the basement with me, and, let me tell you, there'd be times and while I was in that basement where I just had this really, really bad thought that is totally improbable, but as a kid, it just wouldn't leave me alone, that there's a probability that that doll is haunted and probably will come to life. The only reason why I probably thought about that is because I grew up with the story of uh, Night of the Living Dummy, which is one of the Goosebumps books. And I don't think I don't think that particular story is that scary, but like ju just the fact that like I was like that much scared of like the doll, another doll, the um the statue rather. Because I always kind of thought to myself, what if that statue would come to life? But um, the other thing I would... Oh, speaking of which, while we're on the topic of things that uh, kind of scare me, um, or at, at least as a kid, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, The Nightmare for Christmas. So Nightmare for Christmas is probably like my favorite movie like of all time, probably. Mostly because that's the movie that got me interested into filmmaking in the first place. Like, that movie in particular, like, had such an interesting look to... That movie had such an interesting look and feel to it that, like, really set it apart from any other animated film that came out at around that time. And, um... Yeah, it's basically, like, the thing that made me want to go out and pursue my own vision. But, um... My grandma didn't necessarily like me watching that film, or at least like she thought like I wouldn't like it because it was like to her it was really kind of ugly. Which yeah, it is, but like it's still appealing to the eye in like a really weird sort of way. But she thought I would be scared of it. Not true at all. I fucking love it. But, um, if there's anything I am scared of, uh, concerning films at all, whenever I would watch, like, you know, old Disney VHSs, oh man, I don't even know if I even want to put it on the screen right now. But, um, you know those old bumpers that used to appear before the movie would start? Uh, the ones that would say, And now, our feature presentation. Like those ones? Oh my god, I was, I was 
Pl I was really, really scared of those as a kid. Because I remember I was watching, um, I remember I was watching something as a kid. And, like, for whatever reason, like, that same kind of fear of, like, watching those bumpers kind of got to me. So, like, I rushed to my mom when she was in my grandma's room at the time. Like, I I'm serious, man. Those things actually really scared me as a kid. And, hey. I got to the butterfly side and water started shooting. So I guess there's the keyhole. I mean, it's kind of funny how, like, the residents of Traverse Town know about the legend of the, the bell. When they could have... Well, I guess not, because I have the keyblade. But, like, it's kind of funny how they were able to know, like, how exactly to open the keyhole. Um, I'm gonna use this. Because there's a boss coming up right now. But yeah, I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, those things scared me as a kid. I can't really explain how I was, like, scared of it this whole time. I think, it, I think it's something about, like, the announcer. Like, just, like, out of nowhere... I think it's just, like, something about the way that the announcer just, like, comes in out of nowhere. I don't know. J just something about it, like, throws me the wrong way. But then again, I always felt that way about, like, whenever I was watching... Oh, is it over already? JK, it's not. Then again, I always thought of... But then again, like... Not only did those bumpers creep me out, but, like, just whenever I was watching, like, a documentary type thing, or, like, a behind-the-scenes featurette, in which, like, it would have a narrator, like, that would also throw me off. Like, it doesn't happen, like, every single time, but, like, um, there's one, th there's one voice actor in particular who, oh, God, I'm about to die. There we go. Let me just go for these parts first. There's one voice actor in particular who, um, whose voice would, uh, like, often, more often than not, would creep me out as a kid. Because, like I said, I grew up on a diet of Disney films. And in the 1990s, Disney was at, like, you know, an all-time high as far as, like, success goes. Because, you know, the Disney Renaissance and all. So, of course, that would be the great, that would be a great time where everyone would or at least like this company would start re-releasing some of their old films uh, on VHS and digitally restore them and whatnot and what they also did sometimes was that they would also put behind the scenes featurettes at the end of every uh, well, not every but like at the end of some Disney movies and whenever that would happen more often than not Corey Burton who um, actually is the voice for like a slew of different Disney characters. Um, most notably in the Kingdom Hearts series, he voices Yen Sid. Alright, hold on, let me time this right. Oh, come on. Oh, thanks, Doc. Oh, yeah, I forgot, I have Cure now. But yeah, Corey Burton's voice actually, like, would scare me a lot as a kid. Well, not nearly in the amount, uh, not nearly in the amount as much as uh, those bumpers, which were voiced by um, Mark Elliott, I think his name is. And then there was another voice actor who came along. I forgot what his name is. Oh, Brian Cummings. There you go. Like both of those guys, no matter, like no matter who voices like the. Um, feature presentation logo, I would honestly get scared of it because not only was there something about the way that the voice would come out of nowhere, it's also like the music too. Because now whenever I hear that music, I'm always associating it with like a scary voice now. 
That's some fucking psychology for you. But other than that, nothing really scared me as a kid. Other than real life stuff like insects or realistic Halloween decorations. But yeah, just to finish a thought that I had last episode. And holy crap, is this guy taking quite the punishment that I'm giving him. Aha! Uh -huh, he can dish it out, but he can't take it. Come on. And I guess I can't, like, guard myself away from whatever it is he's doing right here, but I guess I can roll away from it. Like, like so. So yeah, this Heartless is basically a more powerful version than the one we fought before. I just kind of wish, like, there was something more going on with the plot at this point. Like, mostly because, yeah, like, this is a different variant of the Heartless that we fought when, uh, we first met. Sort of Donald and Goofy, I mean. Come over here. There we go. Wow, that did absolutely nothing at all. Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to avoid using magic on bosses. Even though it is a Heartless. Man, I forgot I had Cure now. This is such a godsend. And I really need to put it on my... on my customizable list. Why is it still display? Wait, can I seriously go in a house right now? Of all times? I don't want to fuck. Oh god. I didn't know that was a homing thing. Come on. Come over here, coward. Alright, he's almost down. Stop it. Let me kill you. Stop doing that shit. Oh, crap. And he's down. Hey, I got max AP. Yeah, I seriously need to do some more grinding. Oh, cool. Now we got the spell arrow. Wait, could I not get it before? Because I thought you could get it from the Dalmatians. And I know you could get a more powerful version of it, so... Ah, whatever. I'll take it. Cool beans. Oh, by the way, in case you're wondering, yeah, I know we sealed the keyhole to this world. And we got another navigate, uh, navy piece. In case you're wondering, um, when you seal a keyhole to a world, that doesn't mean that the Heartless just stopped coming. For whatever reason, the Heartless still do keep coming. I guess they didn't want the, the players to get bored when they were visiting a world for whatever reason. Hey, now that was quick. Yeah, no kidding. I thought it would have taken a bit longer or something around that. Now you know, I'm in the gummy block business. Working on your gummy ship was sure great. Come again, I'll give you a discount. I don't remember paying you though. Hey, I got a comment. Go ahead, take it. It's a special giveaway. There's another gummy piece that we got. Hey, got another navigation gummy there, eh? I bet you want it installed. Yes, please. Yeah, please. Hmm, looks like this is another one of those blocks that come in sets. You gotta find the mate to this one. Oh. 
Uh, I'm here to shop actually. I want to buy. I got a thousand six hundred. Uh, yeah, give me that one. Uh, give me that one as well, actually. Take one of those. Uh, ah, oh, I wish I had more for that one. That's actually pretty good. <sighs> hmm. Small cannon. Uh, you know, I'm good for now. Now, let's see. I think there's something that you can do in the accessory shop. Now that I think about it. Oh, by the way, there's no one running the accessory shop for whatever reason. This is, um... This guy look familiar to any of you at all? No? Then what kind of rock you've been living under, mate? Well, well, <laughs> as I live and breathe, if it isn't Pinocchio. Oh, hi, Jiminy. What in the world are you doing down here? Hmm. Playing hide and seek. Yeah, right. You just don't believe it. And here I was, up all night just worried sick about you. Why of all the Pinocchio? Yeah, just what I thought. The bullshit nose doesn't lie. Pinocchio, are you telling me the truth? Yes. Yeah, right. Then tell me. What is this? You pointed to the Oh, you're pointing to the item, not the nose. It was a present. No fibbing now. You know you're not supposed to tell lies. A lie grows and grows till you get caught. Plain as the nose on your face. But if you want something, why wait? Why not just take it? Wow, alright. Who told you that? You need some advice from your conscience. Alright. Someone just blaring their horn at 7.41 in the morning on a Tuesday. I guess it's going up on a Tuesday, but I didn't know it was going up this early. That's right, you're my conscience, Jiminy. I'll never, I'll never tell lies as long as you're around. Oh, I, I guess that's fine then. You could just, you could just like say that you're gonna go straight and just have the nose go back to normal. I guess you need to be good so you can become a real boy. You promised Geppetto you would be right. Oh, do you know where my father is? He's not with you? Jiminy, let's go find father. Now hold on. There are all sorts of dangers and temptations out there. I'll go find you, pal. You just wait right here. These fellows here will be helping me. We will? Well, shall we go, Sora? You could have asked this first. Yeah, speaking of which, this is like the first time you've mentioned the fact that you're, you're somebody's conscience, Jiminy. You think you would have let us in on that little tidbit before we came on this journey? Just saying. By the way, how weird of a coincidence it is that we find Pinocchio in a world like this. Oh, well, I guess not. Since, you know, everyone here has lost their own world. How much time do we have left? Ah. Uh... We have 13 minutes left. Uh, I guess I could do some grinding for now. I actually don't know how strong the Heartless are, but I don't know. They can't be that stronger than Deep Jungles, right? And then again, we did come across some new ones. Uh, might as well. Hold on. Oh, actually, I almost forgot. Um, we have the Jungle Key now, which is a new Keyblade. 
Kind of weird looking, but eh, I'll take it. Uh, it's it's just been a while since I've actually looked at my equipment. White Fang slightly raises strength, defense, and max AP. Hmm. -hmm. You know what? I'm going to equip that on myself. Thank you very much. And what can we give Donald? Nothing that would suit him. What about Goofy? Oh, he actually has... Uh, I'll give him this. And take a look at my abilities real quick. Ooh. Um, ooh, second chance. We definitely need this. Sonic Blade? Nah, we don't need that. But no, yeah, we need second chance. That's actually going to be pretty useful, I think. Dal can have MP haste. And yeah, we can do that to Goofy. And let me, let's see. Uh... Do this real quick. Actually, no, hold on. There we go. Boop, 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 uh. We're at level twenty two. Clocked in at 9 hours and 43 minutes into the game so far. Whether that's good or bad, it's totally up to you. Let me go get some items first because I think I actually need to get some items. And the garbage men have arrived apparently because I hear them going about their route. Day. Uh... What does it tend to fully restores the party's HP? Nah, I'm just gonna get like a bunch of... Well, shit, I don't even have that much to begin with. I forgot I spent all my money on gummies. Okay, now we can go do some grinding. Might as well do a little bit before the episode's over. Okay. What? There's no heart. Oh, that's right, because we just sealed the keyhole and the world's all peaceful now, all of a sudden. Well, don't I feel like an idiot? I thought I was gonna do some grinding. I guess not now. <sighs> what to do? What to do? I want to end the episode off right now. It's all too soon. Uh, I wouldn't mess around in the gummy stuff, but um, that might actually take a bit too long because. The tournament being held at the Coliseum. Oh, I guess we could go there. Actually, we can warp there now. We'll go for a jolly ride! Oh, check this out. Whoop. And we just warped there. No need for, um... No need to do that whole mini-game stuff, unless we're discovering a new world. Um, I guess we can mess around in the gummy garage for a little bit. Why not? We have eight minutes left. Don't know how much we can get done, though. Um, gummy ship. Oh! <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. Octopussy. Oh, man, that was the name of our raft. Oh, it stays like that because we defeated Riku. <laughs> ah. Hold on. 
All right, here we go. Actually, uh, hold on, let me... Yeah, let me do that. Oh man, it's been a while since I've actually discovered anything. Ooh, um... I don't know if anyone's gonna catch on to what I'm trying to do right now. Oh shit! <laughs> well, all right, hold on. Um, let me finish up real quick. Because, yes, that would be my timer going off. Sorry I haven't been really talkative at the end of this episode. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go on for just a little bit longer. So now, yeah, it, it's kind of awkward, like, the way that this episode's been going out because I've been kind of silent because I've been... focusing on making this ship. Which, um... Which is uh, kind of funny looking to me. There's something about it. There's something very funny about the ship. Uh, let me add wings to it. Yes! <laughs> yes. Yes, I want to fly this game ship. But I'm not gonna fly it now. I'm just gonna. I'm just going to, um. Save this for later. Yes, that's. This is our first gummy ship that we've built together as friends. And right now we are. Still in Olympus Coliseum. Man, I am going to have to do so much recording there. What, did I say recording? I meant, I meant to say editing. Um, next episode, we are going to go back to Olympus Coliseum because from what I hear, there's some, uh, there's something going on here, over here. So... Yeah, sorry about like that whole ordeal about editing the gummy ship. Nothing happened in case like I do edit the footage out. You know, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to edit the footage out because nothing really major happened. I just like spent a lot of time working on the gummy ship and like I was like being silent throughout the whole thing. And I kind of went over um, time wise, but you know what? I could just edit it all out. No worries. No worries. Um, yeah, next episode we are going to go to Olympus Coliseum again, and we are going to see what's going on over here. So, until next time, peace.